Spirituality was supposed to be something personal. A relationship between you and God. There was nobody, nobody that's supposed to intervene between you and God. Because this is a pers interpersonal relationship, you and your God relationship. How can you put somebody in the middle? You need to go and read it in a book because somebody has published a book. You made the person rich. So for you to know God that was already you, inside you, somebody that looked like you. But don't even talk of this God that we are, he looked to me like an Italian. <laughs> the Jesus I'm talking about, no? If you look, if you are, if yeah. you are a child of God, are you not supposed to be like the God that you are worshipping? Yeah. <laughs> How can you be worshipping somebody that looks like Italian and you are somewhere in Anambra or in Lagos? Yeah. Does it make any sense? Don't we even think at all. Just manage to think. <laughs> the, the funny one you'll see. And it's funny too because it's more in Africa. You're saying he looks Italian because I think, this is my own thinking, that's as close to being white as Europeans are maybe comfortable with saying this Middle Eastern man looked, right? But if you go to Nigeria, he'll even have red hair. Like, he'll even look Irish. Like, white, 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 you know? <laughs> you know? They'll even draw him with blonde hair. You understand? So you see those differences. In Europe, he looks Italian. In Africa, he tends to look like an Irish or like a Norwegian, right? And you begin thinking, ah, okay, why are we all getting these different images? Even in, even in the fact that we're all presenting this person that doesn't look like us. The one we're presenting is like the the concentrate of the <laughs> of that place. You understand? Because you can see somebody that looks Italian in the Middle East. You can see that, right? You can maybe see someone who looks Italian in Mexico, but you'll have a hard time seeing somebody that looks very Norwegian or Irish in uh, in those places. And except in Nigeria, they'll be worshiping the person. And then in Nigeria, they have this iconography they do a lot, where the devil is very black. In in here, I'm in America. The devil's red. Right, the devil is almost always black. In, in fact, I've heard the term in Nigeria as black as the devil. Is I don't know anywhere in the Bible that even says this person is black. So you always see this thing. There's a statue that you will see that it's this white guy just stepping on this black man, and you will see these you know, black people that look like the guy being stepped on celebrating. Is ah. <laughs> is um no? There is no other explanation that <laughs> celebration of stupidity. It is. But let me say something. <laughs> By the time the Europeans came, I'm right now I'm studying the Ekumeku resistance, right? The Ekumeku resistance was a 30-year resistance or war against the uh, British uh, Empire, right, in Nigeria, primarily in what we call now Delta State, right? Um, and a little bit into Edo as well. And, um, and a little bit in Anambra. And... In, in this resistance, or in studying this, there was something that I had already realized this, right? And, but it became very clear in this. By the time the Europeans arrived in Africa, they were 100% done with Christianity, right? The, 19, the early 1900s, late 1800s, or 1800s, is not a time of great religious reverence, right? This is the, 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 the beginning of the modern age. Most of the great thinkers of that time, Frederick Nietzsche, all these different people, were staunch atheists, staunch agnostics. It was very, at that time, the church in the West was not something that was taken seriously by the average everyday person. And the colonialists, as I'm seeing in this, the ones coming. But they know what that religion did to them for 2,000 years and how subservient it made them to the Pope in Rome. And so what if I take this thing and knock these Africans over the head with it? It'll take them 2,000 years to unbind themselves from this thing the way it took us 2,000 years to unbind ourselves from that thing. By the time the Europeans arrived in Africa, they were not religious people. Frederick Luger and all these ones that they talk about, he was not a religious person. These were not church people. In fact, the colonial administration and the church would often fight is what I came to see in this Ekumeku thing. They would butt heads. They didn't like each other. But the colonials knew that that church is going to create an effect that is desirable ultimately. And what is that effect? By the time you guys are done talking to these people, they're going to come to me and, and buy a shirt for $2,000 because it came from my hands. Think about it this way. 
you're a night let's say you're in nigeria you grow up the only white person that you like you know you're not in like a city or anything like that the only white person you're seeing is god <laughs> god right you're seeing this person every day every day every day they're telling you what well, you're if you're with this person you'll be white as snow every single day and you succeed in life you become a governor from there you even become the president and you sit down at a table and an italian man is sitting across from you would you be able to effectively negotiate with that person as equals it can if that person says give me your future you every you have to fight everything inside you to say no that is your god that's why I'm saying that when we are worshiping Jesus, at least the kind that the, the Europeans have presented, yes. it looked to me that we are looking for one Italian man to worship. Yes. That would just make a perfect sense for me. Look for an, an Italian street on the sea. I say, oh my God. Yes, you are my God. <laughs> if somebody that looks exactly, there's many people that walk around that look like this depiction of Jesus, right? There was a rumor that it was based off of... Uh, Cesare Borgia, I think I can't say, I'm not going to say the name correctly, it's on my or whatever, but Cesare Borgia, that his face was the model for what we now call Jesus, but that's debated anyway, that kind of thing. But there's many people that walk around with that face. It's, 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 it's most Italians that grow their hair out will look like that, right? <laughs> Can you imagine if that person came to, to, to Emo State? <laughs> Yes, oh yeah, it's cool. <laughs> That's not it then. Wanted, they will have, there was, they, you can't see, you're already programmed to worship this human being, right? I respect the Muslims because they said, don't draw Allah. Don't draw the Prophet Muhammad. And when people draw them, you know, there's fights about it, things like that. But that's wisdom. I don't care what anybody says. That's wisdom. Because the Christians have created a very strange situation in the minds of their own. Now, there are Christians who look or are able to look beyond that. But if you talk to them, their approach, their religion is very spiritual anyway. You understand? So, yeah, go ahead. All right. That's interesting. Uh, actually, we, we, we can go deep on that, but that is for another day. Now, let's talk about the medicine, the medicine share. What do you want, like people to know about that? Because you are doing very interesting programs. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So the Medicine Shell is my YouTube channel. You can just search uh, the Medicine Shell. Um, if you search Ebo Spirituality, I'm probably the first person that's going to show up, right? And what the Medicine Shell is, is me taking different concepts in, in Ebo Spirituality, um, the different Abara. So you can you have um, Chineke, which is not an Abara. Chineke is, is God and creation. Chineke, Chuku, Amadioha, um, Agu, uh, different things like that. And I dedicate a video to them and I just break down everything i can deduce and find on the topic and know and so forth um so i go topic by topic by topic by topic um i infuse history i infuse custom i infuse all these different things to kind of give as much of a whole picture as i can um so that's the medicine shell i've been at it for about two years um those as far as the medicine shell goes if you want to go beyond the videos right um i have a patreon it's at patreon.com slash the medicine shell and on my patreon i keep my library that i use for my research open i'm constantly updating it so right now we have um hundreds of rare books articles first-hand accounts like often i'm out site like there was a man that went to benin and did this there's a man that went to Benin. i have the document there you can go read it the whole story and very interesting stuff right that's available. One of the things I recently started doing too for the patrons is I, because we're, we're talking about the traditional calendars, right? So in your place, they have their five day calendar. In my place, we have a four day calendar. And so what I did was I, I made a digital calendar, right? It lets you know which day is AK, which day is Uriye, which day is Afo, which day is Ankwa. Because again, like we were saying earlier, all of these things come with very specific customs right and uh, very specific observances um our ancestors also had a lunar calendar so they did they measured the months by the moons right which is actually how most people in the world began but then like the romans said no you're this month is going to be august augustus because i'm august and i'm gone so you're going to listen to me that kind of thing so but this is the original african lunar calendar right and i put it all in digital form so patrons once you become a patron your google calendar can be up can be can be fused to your google calendar um that type of thing and why did i do all this because i want the medicine shell to be a platform for anybody who wants to go further and embrace um uh, African spirituality, Igbo spirituality, or Danani and Igbo. Anybody who wants to go further and embrace that thing, I, it's all available here. 
right? I want to make it all available here. I want to make it as easy as possible, that kind of thing. And like I said, the thing pushing me to do it, I can't explain what it is. It's not to be explained. It's a compulsion. So um, it's what I do. It's what gives me joy. So yeah. Uh, that is it. That is it. You know, we are going to find passion for our life. We're not going to find the reason why we are here. If you find it, celebrate it. Yeah. Celebrate it basically means doing it every day. That is the way to, you know, it's a response to a call. You must find your mission in life. What are you going to contribute to this world that you find yourself? 